we are starting with the, the women's uh, part because, uh, like I mentioned last week, uh, uh, it's nice to start with the women's part because they are the um, they are our best. Uh, I, I love me personally. Ladies I love first, watching, right? Uh, uh, Always ladies yeah, first. Yeah, I love personally. Uh, I I love watching the ladies more than the men. I don't know. Sometimes I I think that uh, the the um, the ATP tour is a little bit boring with uh, uh, Djokovic, <laughs> Federer, and Nadal winning everything. So uh, yeah. you have to expect the unexpected from the women's side. Someone was asking me, uh, can Simona Halep win uh, the US Open? I said it's difficult because the, the women's part is so, so unpredictable. And this is why we love it. So we talk about um, WTA Toronto, uh, about some outright bets here. Uh, Simona Halep at 6.5, Serena Williams 7.5, Ashley Barty 8.5. Carolina Pliskova at 10, Naomi Osaka at 10, Zvitolina 17, Slow Stevens at 17. Huge, huge surprise. Angela Kerber out of the tournament. Bam, bam. Uh, I don't know how she managed to, uh, to do that after winning the first set 6-0 uh, uh, against uh, Kasatkina. Uh, playing some brilliant sense, uh, uh, tennis also in the third set. Absolutely amazing shots from Kerber, but somehow she managed to lose. Tell me why, boys. Tell me why, James. Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, I think she just wasn't consistent enough on the day. It's the, I, I call it the bagel curse. Every time you win the first set 6-love or even 6-1, you're guaranteed to lose the match. I mean, obviously you're not, but it always feels like players <laughs> when they... <laughs> guaranteed. It always feels like when players do that, they, I suppose, if the other player can push back with some decent form in the next sets it seems to offset the the sort of balance a little bit. It seems to get in their head almost that they should have won by now or they can't be losing from six love. It's almost embarrassing. Um, but yeah, big surprise. Not expected. I think that it's worse than losing 6-0, 6-0 to win the first set 6-0 and after that <laughs> to lose the match. I think that this is the worst thing that it can happen to you as a player. Maybe after 6-0 in the first set, I don't know, something is happening in their mind and they're saying, this match is too easy. So... Yeah. I will relax a little bit. And here I am, Kasatkina, boom, boom, and I'm out. Uh, yeah, something tell like me that. Why, James? Yeah. Tell me why it's nice. Tell me why Kerber is out of the tournament so early. Uh, I mean, she's been inconsistent all year. Hasn't really been able to live up uh, of the heights of, uh, of the past. So it's not really a huge surprise to see her go out in tournaments lately. She's also been injured. Uh, she was injured coming into Wimbledon. She was fighting to get fit there uh, with an ankle injury so she could barely move at Wimbledon and press. She even showed up. Uh, so she hasn't been able to get as much max practice in and play as many tournaments as she probably would have liked up until now. Uh, so there's that too. But certainly after you win the first set, six love uh, against another player that has been underperforming this year uh, in Kasatkina, uh, you'd have to consider an epic choke. And I don't know. Sometimes the, the WTA tour is weird like that. You you have you have these things happen. Uh, mm. Terrible. And uh, uh, I will tell you, I am very happy with uh, the Contavate win. I know that uh, you played the, the other way around, it's nice, but I'm really happy with uh, her winning because I don't stand the the other player. Um, Wang Wang <laughs> lost against Kuznetsova. I mean, how how old is Kuznetsova? Fifty five. 60, 65, I don't know. She's still playing. I don't know. You To lose against Kuznetsova right now. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm joking with uh, 65, but uh, she's uh, 34. Uh, a little bit uh, uh, younger than uh, uh, Serena Williams. Um, I think that a few months or, or something like that. Anyway, uh, Kuznetsova. Ostapenko, huge, huge surprise in my opinion against uh, Caroline Garcia. Uh, huge underdog Ostapenko there and managed uh, two straight uh, a victory in straight set 6-3, 6-3 absolutely incredible for number 82 WTA who won a major two years ago imagine where she arrived 82 in the world that is shocking for uh, for some players uh, we have some live uh, uh, matches uh, going on right now uh, Collins versus Shinyakova. Uh, 
uh, there in the first in the third set in the decider. Azarenka easily won against Camila Giorgi, the first one 6-2. Uh, Zeng is uh, struggling against uh, Maria, uh, losing 2-5 uh, in the first uh, uh, set. Um, but let's talk about uh, some outright bets here. Simona Halep declared that uh, uh, she uh, didn't practice for the last two uh, weeks. She was on vacation. She didn't touch the racket. She didn't touch any ball. Or maybe she did some <laughs> human balls. But uh, that is not uh, what we are interested in right now. Uh, 6.5. I, I think that she. it's a little bit uh, bad. Uh, I, I wouldn't touch that market. Uh, but uh, it's it's very strange to see also Serena Williams, uh, second favorite at 7.5. I don't know. It, it feels to me like the bookies are going with Serena Williams. I think that if Serena Williams magically was winning Wimbledon for two years right now, for, for, for two years uh, uh, from today and on, she would be the main favorite in every tournament that she was uh, uh, performing. And now she is second because uh, uh, Simona Halep won the the, um, the last Grand Slam Wimbledon in uh, in London. So what do you say about uh, these prices? And uh, if you want to play something from the outright bets, I wouldn't touch uh, uh, this market, but uh, maybe you will convince me uh, to do it. James? So <clears throat> this is quite a stacked field in my eyes. I think someone like Halep, um, probably could do with a couple of weeks of relaxing. It might make a play better. Um, maybe some balls as well. But the thing is, from my perspective, I'm not really sure who I would pick from the top of the field. It seems like a fairly heavy field. As you say, Serena is always difficult because if she plays her best, um, then it's not going to give anyone else much of a chance. But it hasn't really looked like she's in that mood recently. Barty seems to have been very consistent this year very solid but at the same time you would probably expect that if we're going to be taking outrights here it would probably be against the top of the field it is tricky though because each exactly. of them in their respective quarters um i would expect them to win them so it's going to require a bit of imagination i think probably the most obvious person in my opinion um although this might be a bit divisive would be andrisku because i don't think that i think someone like that someone playing that well before their injury I don't think they're likely to come back out and be able to play the very best straight away, but I don't think it's impossible. And I think if she starts playing well at the beginning of the week, which I would expect, then you're very likely to have got a nice prize at the start of the week. She's been on uh, camera talking about how good she feels now, being back, how she's ready to play. Of course, that's for camera, but maybe it means something. Um, if she does play near to her best i think she has every chance of going deep of pushing the top players as she has already um so that would be a chance she's 40 to 1 currently with betfred again of course the problem with doing these outright previews um when it's in play is that we don't have live prices so we can't tell you what price that'll be when it comes back um when it comes back live um but i would guess that she's going to go well this week if she's fit which i would guess she is from what i've seen uh, yeah, absolutely interesting with uh, Andres Kudera. I was reading a um, uh, declaration from her pre-tournament. Uh, she was uh, very thrilled to come back on tour and uh, play at the competitive level after uh, the injury. And now, obviously, she will play a fellow um, uh, Canadian there uh, with uh, uh, the, the social media girl there um, coming in action. I think that she will pass, uh, she will pass her. But uh, after that, I think that uh, she will struggle. If you ask me, that's a good price. But uh, on that price, you have also Sakari at uh, 40 to 1, at 40.0. You have also Arina Sabalenka at the same price. So uh, Dona Vekic at uh, 51. So many, many uh, great, great numbers on uh, other players that are in shape, that are performing week in and week out and have it on their blood right now. Andres, I'm, I'm sure she will have more one. exposed. That would be my big problem with that. All of the players you mentioned there, I wouldn't have said that they were playing well enough recently to be winning this event. Of course, they might play well. And this is always you trade off information for, I suppose, variants. So with Andresco, I don't think 
that she's likely to do that. But in the sense that I think most of the time she just won't be in enough match fitness. Um, but all the players you mentioned, I think they're quite exposed this year. They've kind of shown the level they're playing at, and it would surprise me if they managed to play well enough. I mean, of course they could win. It, you know, this is a numbers game, but it would surprise me if they played well enough to make that seem good value for me. Um, but yeah, I take your point. It's very hard uh, because we're kind of guessing about how fit she's going to be. Exactly. We don't know how fit Halep will be after two weeks and a half of a break after Wimbledon. You know, we don't know how fit she will be. Of course, I will be very yeah. happy if she will uh, retain her title here at the Rogers Cup. But uh, I will also be happy if Andreescu will win because she is also Romanian with Romanian blood. She was born and raised in Romania from Romanian parents. And after that, she moved, uh, moved to Canada and now she's playing for Canada. Uh, it was a discussion in the past, uh, in the in this year, if uh, she will make it uh, or or she will accept if the Romanian Federation will uh, try to uh, call her for the Fed Cup, you know. But uh, I don't think that uh, will happen. Anyway, the Fed Cup will not be what it originally was. Uh, also, Simona Halep said that uh, she will uh, not play uh, on the Fed Cup anymore because the format changed and she doesn't like the format. So that's a problem for many, many players like the Davis Cup change on the on the men's uh, tour. So I don't like that either. But uh, the discussion is here. Uh, it's nice if it's good to take such a number 41, 40 to 1 or to go with the um, with the favorites here, Halep 6.5, Williams 7.5, Ashley Barty uh, 8.5. I don't know, Ashley Barty, maybe a take here. Um, yeah, so we're coming to here, WTA Toronto, WTA Premier 5 tournament, uh, playing at medium fast hard courts. They alternate these events, so they play one year in Montreal and then play one year in Toronto. So the women are in Toronto this year, the men are in Montreal. Uh, Simona Halep will try to defend her crown from last year, but I don't think the newly crowned Wimbledon champion uh, will come here with much of a shot. Like Alex said there, she hasn't played uh, at all. She's been taking time off. Uh, I think she's in a bit of a Wimbledon hangover. The entire country of Romania went into ecstasy when she won that Grand Slam title. Uh, so, yeah, I think she's definitely worth opposing here. I would not lay uh, back that price. Uh, Serena Williams, the problem I have with her is that obviously she still does have the level to be every single WTA player on tour. That's how talented she is still. Uh, but she's only played six non-slam matches for the entire year. Uh, so when you want to back Serena Williams in any tournament, you'll have to keep that in mind. So with that little of you know matches outside of slams i don't really want to back, back on her to go deep especially not with her home slam of us open coming up pretty soon uh so that price seems a little bit low to me uh, ashley Barty looked a bit vulnerable and also had some injury issues at wimbledon uh when she lost to allison risk surprisingly there with a uh, shoulder arm injury i think it was uh mm. so definitely looks a bit vulnerable too so don't like any of the, the big favorites. What I did go ahead and do is uh, on Sunday, obviously, I don't know what the live press is right now, uh, but I bet Belinda Bencic. I bet on her to win quarter one at 12, and I bet on her to win outright at 34. Uh, so this is the 2015 champion. She returns to Toronto, and she's had great memories from here. As an 18 year old, she shocked the world. She reeled off six. There you go, six straight victories against very, very established names. She beat uh, Eugenie Bouchard at the time where she was actually, you know, focusing on tennis. Uh, Karolin Wozniacki, Sabine Lisicki, Anna Ivanovic, Serena Williams, and then Simona Halep to take the title. Uh, huge breakthrough there for Bencic. Uh, she's also known as a giant killer. She's been looked very strong this year. She won the title in Dubai. Uh, she's beaten eight out of the 12 top 10 players she's faced this year. Incredible record there. Uh, so as I said before, with Barty looking a bit vulnerable post Wimbledon, uh, Elina Svitolina low on confidence right now after uh, a shocker of a choke in San Jose. Uh, ben is just definitely the one to look out for in quarter one. And she has a great chance to take the title here. So that's who I went with. Uh uh, Zvitolina, uh, Zvitolina, she might play Zvitolina uh, later on uh, before the quarterfinals. She might play Ashley Barty in the quarterfinals. She might play Victoria Zarenka. She might play Yastremska. 
a great uh, youngster there. So uh, difficult, tough, tough, tough quarter for uh, Berinda Bencic. But as you mentioned, if she will be in top shape, she can beat anyone because uh, she is very, very skillful and uh, she has the power and the skills to 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 beat anyone in a in a good day. Um, okay. Going uh, match by match a little bit, what the, you guys like the most. I was uh, talking a little bit about Maria Sakari and um, uh, her chance uh, at uh, 41 to win this tournament. She struggled against uh, Zeng. You had an in-play bet on your Twitter handle, uh, Snice, for uh, Zeng. Uh, there, I think that it was at three point something. And um, I was uh, watching the match because uh, I couldn't sleep. I, I normally go to sleep at 1, 2 o'clock at night. So, um, yeah, impressive uh, from Zeng, but very, very poor from uh, uh, Sakari. Uh, Sakari right now um, is the favorite. Uh, no, he's not the favorite to win this match against uh, 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 Alison Riske. I think we don't have the odds yet. We have the odds yet? Oh, wait to see. Yeah, uh, it's evens, basically, for both of them. Um, at, Sakari is the yeah. tiniest of favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that uh, Sakari is a good, at least in the in this one against the, um, against the, um, uh, against the, uh, Alison Riske? It's nice. Do you want to take this Who one? Ask, who nice. asking? It's nice. Me? Oh, okay, yeah. Yes. Uh, no, I actually went ahead and bet Alison Risk to win the first set here. I got it at 2.18, uh, and I'll tell you why. So, uh, Sakari is coming from San Jose. That's West Coast, USA. She's now on a very, very short turnaround. She's going to fly over to Toronto, uh, cross time zones. Uh, that's a three-hour time difference there, and the body clock becomes a bit messed up there, as probably those who follow uh, the NFL could testify to. Uh, it's very difficult uh, when your body's used to, you know, to training and playing and eating at a certain time schedule, and then only uh, one or two days later going out to compete uh, in another time zone. So I think she'll struggle a bit with that. Uh, but also, Alison Risk has played three games here already, and she's looked very good. Uh, she obviously went very deep at Wimbledon. Uh, grass is her best surface, but she's also great on hard courts. Uh, so it's a very, very tricky match up there for Sabalenka, sorry, Sakari. Uh, so I do think she'll come out a bit sluggish here. Uh, I like Risk's game, uh, and I think she can punish uh, Sakari if she doesn't start off great. Uh, so I want her to win the first set. Um, Sakari does have the skill to turn that match around, uh, but she could very well go out in the first round. So I would stay off uh, outrights for Sakari in this tournament. Another match uh, starting uh, in uh, about uh, 40 minutes or so, uh, Ashley Barty versus Sofia Kennan. Uh, the trend on Twitter and uh, many, many uh, uh, tipsters and um, uh, people I know are betting Ashley Barty 2-0 straight victory at 1.7 right now. Uh, James, do you think that uh, that is a great set of odds? So, as I said before, I think Barty, to me, has been very consistent. Uh, as Snice pointed out, there's been some potential issues with injury uh, from Wimbledon. It's difficult to judge. I mean, she's had, you know, over a month now, just under a month, um, to to recover. So, she's probably fine. I'm not sure if she'd be risking um, too much if she's not fine. So, you can always go ahead and back something like Two Love, in the hopes that if she is going to retire, it will be early on. I don't think I'd back the win at that kind of price. Um, again, also something like a games handicap is always good if you think there's a slight risk of injury because that will be void if the match is not completed. I would certainly expect if she's fit for her to win that quite comfortably. I would expect that to be quite a dominant performance. Okay, let's talk about uh, some matches uh, for uh, from tomorrow. Um... Uh, Bencic, uh, Snai's favorite, uh, is playing with uh, uh, Julia Jorges, and she's huge, huge favorite at 1.36. Uh, Simona Halep is uh, playing with uh, uh, Brady, uh, who pulled off an upset, uh, in my opinion, beating Kiki Mladenovic uh, in the first round. Uh, Suarez Navarro uh, against uh, Contavide. Suarez Navarro with a beautiful win against uh, Venus Williams in the first round, and 
also uh, Serena Williams against uh, Eliza Mertens. Eliza Mertens at 3.0 right now, the best odds on... No, 3.5 with Bet365, the best odds on the market. Uh, do you guys have anything for uh, these uh, four or five matches? Also, we have Alexandrova versus uh, Zhang. Uh, if you like something, please uh, share with uh, us. Uh, it's nice. Uh, yeah, so I had a look at these matches. Uh, not really that much that I liked. Like I said earlier, uh, not really sure about Serena Williams uh, in non-slam tournaments. Uh, kind of a, a tricky proposition. They're trying to predict uh, who's going to show up, if she's going to be you know, fully fit and feeling it. Uh, but one match I do like is uh, Belinda Bentich again. Uh, she played incredibly well in her first round here. She dominated Anastasia Potapova 6-2, 6-1. Uh, finished that in just over an hour. She won over 70% of both her firsts and her second serve points, uh, created 10 break points, taking five of them. Uh, and I think she faced Sarah herself. Uh, so a very, very, very dominant performance there and a testament to good form uh, starting off her comeback here in Toronto. Uh, Yula Gyrgis, uh she's only gone 18-14 this year, uh, which is in stark contrast to her 45-23 record last year. So she struggled a bit here. Uh, had a bit of a disappointing season. Uh, the German also withdrew from Lausanne uh, a few weeks ago with a forearm injury, uh, and she was made to work very hard to overcome clay quarter uh, Polona Herzog in the first round here. So she did manage to play, uh, but she had to fight really hard to win. Uh, Gyrgyz has a very powerful game, uh, but Bentis is a master at redirecting pace and usually thrives against these power players. But she can she can absorb and redirect the ball. Uh, in the other corner and move them around the court and make them uh, get flustered and lose their game. So it's a good matchup for Bencic. Uh, she showed extremely good form in round one. Uh, the line is only minus three and a half. Uh, so I went ahead and bet that for at 1.72. Yeah, you always prefer not to bet the straight sets and uh, bet the Asian handicap because, uh, as you said, uh, uh, even if she's losing one set, she might cover the uh, the Asian handicap on in terms of games there. Uh, very good uh, take also there. Um, what do you think uh, about uh, Eliza Mertens, uh, 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 James? Uh, you had uh, her, you played against her uh, uh, in uh, San Jose. You played against uh, Christ, uh, you played with Christy Ann. At 4.6, and it was a winning bet. Your first bet on the women's side there, and uh, uh, you went bet. against uh, Snice, and you won that. Uh, so, uh, what do you think? Because uh, Snice is saying that uh, it's very hard uh, to uh, to bet Serena Williams at this price and on a non non Grand Slam tournament. So, can Eliza Merton cover the plus 4.5 Asian handicap at 1.83? Uh, she can, she she uh, is she able to cope with uh, Serena's uh, uh, powerful uh, service and uh, and that's about it because she's not moving anyway too much. Uh, so only the powerful service. She has to be a great uh, um, like like Simona. She has, every player who wants to beat uh, uh, Serena Williams right now should uh, should see that Wimbledon final. I think that uh, they can uh, learn a lot from that. Do you think that four yeah. plus 4.5 at 1.83, it's a good bet? It's a value bet? Yeah, it's funny because the, the final, of course, um, I think Halb talked about how she she tried to just be in the moment, not think too much about it and have a specific strategy she was going to use. Um, and of course, if more players did that against the top guys, I think we'd have a lot more upsets. Um, and I think in general, they don't. They get stuck in their own head. They kind of forget that you don't have to play a certain way. Um, but yeah, so I think the difficulty here is that someone like Serena Williams is, I mean, as Snyze was saying, it's difficult to say how she's going to perform away from the slams. Um, if she plays her best, of course, or even if she plays close to that, I doubt Mertens will have too much of a chance. From what I saw in San Jose, um, she didn't really look prepped for that match at all, um, which was obviously kind of what I was hoping um, in, the, in the simple sense that she just didn't look comfortable on court, really. Um, Arne did a very good job of spreading the court, pushing her wide, giving her a lot of, um, a lot of things to think about in general. Um, but to be honest, she kind of, um, it was a bit of a, 
she certainly lost the match as much as Arn won it in that she did. I can't remember the, the actual amount of double faults, but she did a lot of double faults. She was looking very lackluster. I remember the coach being quite unhappy with her uh, when he was when he was talking to her. So mm. I this is not really the kind of matchup I'd be getting involved in. Both of them fairly unpredictable coming into this. Um, I think if if we have everything go the right way, in that if Serena doesn't play that well and Mertens decides to play very well, then yeah, for sure, she could cover that handicap. But obviously, it's really difficult to predict whether or not that's going to happen. And given that handicaps tend to be lower variance options, they tend to be for situations where I think I've got quite a strong read on the match, I would probably be avoiding that. And I just I wouldn't be wanting to get involved with this, this kind of matchup. Um, the one that I did have an interest in, in this in the women's um, was again Andrescu and I think it's kind of a, a little bit of a gamble on fitness as we talked about um, but I think I mean I talked to Snyes about this as well that if she plays even remotely close to her sort of standard form that I don't think Bouchard who again as Snyes mentioned hasn't really been that focused on the tennis or it doesn't look like she has I don't think that she'll have many answers so there's two things that I thought were interesting in that matchup. Uh, the first thing is either something like the handicap or just the straight win. If you wanted to put it into an accumulator, of course, that was part of my treble from today, um, which uh, is Andrescu at the, at the win. But you could also just take on the handicap. Um, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Um, but then the second thing which you might want to consider um, is six love uh, to Andrescu. I mentioned this last week with uh, Sunwoo Kwon um, against uh, Steber. And he actually managed to win that second set 6-2. He won the first set 6-1. So we weren't that far off the 6-love at 34. And again, here, uh, when they last met, these two, um, it was 6-love, I think, in the second set to Andrescu. And that's 17 currently with William Hill. Uh, I think the first set 6-love is also 17 with Bet365 if you wanted to back both. Uh, but the second set is where I'd be expecting it, especially given Andrescu's coming back, first competitive match since coming back. So she's probably going to take at least a set to to get into it, I would imagine. Um, and it's probably going to take at least a set for Bouchard to, to give up. So yeah. I like those two bets. I like taking a chance on the six love. I was quite surprised when I saw 17. Um, I think it's not. It's really not a push to see her being very dominant um, in one of those two sets. Um, and yeah, that and the handicap, I think, are my two, my two plays. I will take also something uh, for uh, tomorrow on the women's side. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very confident in this play. Um, uh, I'm going against Simona Halle, but not entirely. I think that uh, Jennifer Brady can cover the plus 5.5 on the Asian handicap at 1.71 right now with Pinnacle. I think that this is a brilliant play, in my opinion. And uh, I will also uh, share it on uh, Twitter as a one unit play. Uh, for uh, my followers. So I will do it right now because uh, I think that uh, the odds will drop uh, till uh, the start of the match at 5.5 plus 5.5 on the Asian handicap. So that means that uh, uh, she if she might lose 6-4, 6-3. I think that uh, Simona Halep will me will, will she might win the match but she will not be very dominant. She's trying to enter a little bit uh, uh, in good shape to prepare for US Open, you know, not to force from the first match because it's very important not to get injured in the first match after a, such a long uh, uh, um, break after the, the Wimbledon. And I think that uh, Jennifer Brady, who played uh, very good against the Kiki Mladenovic, winning in straight sets, can cover that plus 5.5 on the Asian handicap. So that's it uh, for for the women's side uh, from Toronto. Oops, Going, nice has oh, some more. Sorry, 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 it's nice. Sorry, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. I actually forgot uh, because this match goes off tonight. Uh, I think it's like 1 a.m. Uh, British time. Uh, I do have a play on this Andreescu Bouchard game. It was a game I gave out uh, on Saturday, actually. So we're very confident here. It, it is a uh, max investment from my side. Uh, like we talked about here, uh, Andreescu does look fit. <laughs> Uh, and with how young she is and how bright of a talent she is, she wouldn't be playing this event if her, she and her team uh, weren't confident that she would be able to play uh, at a good level. Uh, so what many people uh, have kind of forgotten by now is how dominant Andreescu was when she was last playing. 
uh, she's actually the woman that has the highest winning percentage on hardcore uh, in the entire tour, uh, 85.2% over the last year on hard courts uh, of the Masters she has won. She's a complete player. She has everything. Uh, she has the mentality. She has the power. She has the wit, the change of pace, drop shot, the voice, everything. Uh, Bouchard, on the other hand, she's a train wreck at the moment. She's <laughs> lost seven straight matches. Uh, last one was a complete embarrassment uh, versus Lauren Davis, 6-2, 6, two, six one. Uh, she, it is looking like she's trying to work hard with a new coach to get back to uh, get back to tennis, but she's dropped out of the top 100 now. She doesn't look good at all. Uh, like James said, the last meeting that was this year, it was a 6-2, six, 6 love drubbing by Andreescu, and uh, as long as she doesn't feel her injury, she should be fit for a fight, and she should dominate this. So I bet the minus 4.5 at 1.98 has obviously come down a bit but i still think there's value in this uh in this i think um i think she's lost is it 14 in a row on hard courts as the underdog going back to 2017 it's almost two years in a row she hasn't won a match as underdog um on hard courts 